Now it's time to move on to learning about PCIe configuration address space. That's something that's accessed through port IO at the very beginning of the system boot, and then later on memory mapped IO once the port IO is used to set up the memory mapped IO. So we're not going to really get into the super low level hardware details on this because they're not relevant for us. All of the PCIe access that we care about is done through the configuration address space that we're going to learn about. And it's basically an abstraction and therefore we're only going to care about the abstraction that the BIOS actually sees in this class. There's a lot of interesting things to learn down at the physical layers of the protocol about how you can do spoofing to cause you know, DMA requests to look like they come from different devices and so forth but that's not the purpose of this class, hopefully in a future class. So a little bit about the evolution of the architecture. Uh, it started out as PCI, and then the next version was called PCI-X for extended, and then eventually PCIe for express. Now PCI express is what you're gonna be dealing with almost exclusively on all modern systems, but there is backwards compatibility and you can introduce very old legacy systems if the hardware is set up that way. But the interesting point here is that PCI and PCI-X were a parallel connection. And then once they move to PCIe, it's a serial connection using a sort of switching mechanism. And therefore PCIe looks very much like a typical network that you would see intercomputer, but it's the intra-computer network that's used to connect a bunch of internal chunks of hardware in the CPU, PCH, and also external peripheral cards, Thunderbolt cards, and stuff like that. Now at the very beginning, we're going to talk about normal PCI or legacy PCI, or sometimes we call it compatible PCI. And that's just because the most important thing we care about, that configuration address space was introduced by the original PCI. Later on, we'll move to PCIe, and there's only one sort of extension that we care about where they basically make the configuration address space a little bit bigger. So the original PCI stands for Peripheral Component Interconnect. You may also see me refer to it as Legacy PCI or Compatible PCI. And it was specified and standardized around 1993 by Intel. As the name suggests, the key point was to standardize how you connect to peripherals. But what's interesting about it is the fact that because Intel came up with it, they integrated it into their CPUs, PCHs, MCHs very deeply. And so it effectively forms a sort of backbone fabric inside of CPUs and PCHs, whereby the main processor can get access to other hardware components within the actual chip itself. So the core interfaces of PCI are actually processor independent. So you can have a PCI system on x86 or ARM or power or any other thing. But as I said, for our purposes, we really care about the fact that it's just sort of abstracted away and mostly it's all about configuration address space access. That's what the BIOS and CPU use to access the various configuration registers of chunks of hardware. And while modern systems are mostly going to be using PCI Express, like I mentioned before, they do of course support backwards compatibility for older hardware. And nowadays there's a special interest group, the PCI special interest group, which maintains the standards as PCI continues to evolve for the most part, just to make it faster to allow for higher throughput when interacting with peripherals. Now let's talk about the topology of PCI because this is going to be more or less the same between the legacy or compatible PCI and PCI Express. So the first thing is that you can have up to 256 buses attached to each bus can be up to 32 devices. So let's add some more buses and let's add some more devices. And for a given device, you can actually have multiple what they call functions. And so this would be if, for instance, a particular card supported Wi-Fi and Bluetooth at the same time. Those would be two independent functions, which would may or may not have two independent processors on the particular device or two cores in the same processor. So you can think of functions as attached to devices, or you can think of them as being actually internal to the device. They're two different functions, but it could just be something like a GPU that has, you know, only one purpose really being a GPU, but it could still expose multiple different functionalities through different PCI functions. And then ultimately these multiple PCI buses are connected via bridges. These are how one device on one bus talks to other devices on other buses. For instance, the CPU, which will frequently be up on bus zero, talks to something like the nominal Wi-Fi Bluetooth card. So importantly, on Intel systems, bus zero is always reserved for Intel themselves. 
And so that's where you're going to find a lot of the interesting bits that we care about and that we've made oblique references to previously in the class before you fully understood it. Well, in this section, you'll start to fully understand why things like the DRAM controller are on bus zero, device zero, function zero, and why things like the LPC device are on bus zero, device 31, function zero.